Hey, what's up, everybody? So today we're going to be going over Mexican independence again, all right? We had a long weekend, so I just want to make sure that you guys have a good understanding of Mexican independence. So instead of taking notes, what we're going to be doing instead is reading. So as we read, I want for you guys to read along with me <clears throat> and make sure you answer the questions. I'm going to tell you guys when to pause the video. That way you can pause the video, answer the questions, and then replay the video when you're ready to start the next section. Okay? So, let's get started. The Growing U.S. Threat In 1775, American patriots in the 13 colonies began fighting for independence from Great Britain. Later, Spain joined the fight against the British. In 1783, the United States officially won its independence. Some Spanish officials began to see the growth of the United States as a threat. U.S. settlers soon moved to lands near the Mississippi River. Without permission, some continued into Louisiana. Spanish officials decided to allow U.S. immigration to boost the population. In 1800, Spain returned Louisiana to France, and then France sold it to the United States in 1803 for $15 million. This land deal was known as the Louisiana Purchase, border disputes in Texas. The Spanish were alarmed by the Louisiana Purchase. The United States now bordered New Spain. A dispute arose over the undefined boundaries of Louisiana. In particular, both sides claimed the territory that lay between the Sabine River and the Arroyo Hondo. Spanish and U.S. officials agreed to make the disputed region in East Texas neutral, not belonging to either side. This territory became known as the Neutral Ground. Both countries would remain out of the area until diplomats, or officials who represent countries in foreign affairs, set that official border. In 1819, Spain and the United States signed the adams onis Treaty setting the boundary between their territories. As a part of the terms, the United States gave up all claims to Texas in exchange for the neutral ground and Florida. All right, there are three questions. One, two, three, and that challenge activity. Make sure you guys hit those three questions and that challenge activity. Push pause in the video so you guys can answer those questions. And then we'll pick up with section three. <clears throat> okay, section three. The Philip Nolan Expeditions. Philip Nolan, a United States citizen, had begun coming to Texas in 1791 as a Mustang trader. Spanish officials grew suspicious of him. In late 1800, Nolan and some 20 men returned to Texas. When Spanish soldiers tried to arrest him, he resisted and was killed. Nolan's actions increased Spanish fears of U.S. expansion. Spanish officials worried about filibusters, or what they're later called as military adventurers, who tried to stir up rebellion. Most filibusters wanted, free, wanted to free Texas from Spain. Some were looking for adventure. The Call for Mexican Independence In Mexico, fights broke out between criollos, people of Spanish descent born in Mexico, and peninsulares, people who were born in Spain. In 1810, Father Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla of Dolores, Mexico, called for an end to rule by governing peninsulares. He was killed in 1811 by Spanish soldiers. His call helped begin a Mexican movement for independence from Spain. The Green Flag Over Texas When Hidalgo's revolution began, Jose Bernardo Gutierrez de Lara and a U.S. Army officer, Augustus McGee, raised an army of volunteers. They named their force the Republic Army of the North. Flying a solid green flag, the expedition invaded Texas in 1812 to free it from Spanish control. Spanish Army uh, sorry, Spanish army under General Joaquin de Arredondo defeated the Republican Army of the North in August 1813 in the Battle of Medina. Pirates and Rebels on the Coast 
filibuster and revolutionary activity continued around the Gulf of the Gulf Coast. Henry Perry gathered a force of about 300 and moved into Texas, establishing a base on Galveston Island. The island was home to pirates and smugglers. The Long Expeditions Originally from Mississippi, James Long thought that Texas should be a part of the United States. He organized an army and in 1819, he declared Texas independent. Spanish soldiers ran his group out of Texas. Long then sailed a second army to Texas. He was captured and killed while he was awaiting trial. All right, cool. So there are one, two questions about this section. Oh, two questions. And then the challenge activity. Make sure you guys hit that challenge activity and answer those two questions. Push pause on the video so you can get that done. Okay, also, on page 87, there's fill in the blanks. Make sure that you circle the correct answer choice. And adjectives. Make sure you do the adjectives. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. So, find that word, filibuster, and give me two words that describe what a filibuster is. Do the same thing for 7, 8, 9, and 10, okay? Describe those keywords. And then we'll move on to section four. Okay. Mexico wins independence. After the Spanish captured, father, captured and executed Father Hidalgo, a priest named Jose Maria Morelos y Pavón took control of the fight for Mexican independence. He won several battles and gained more control of Mexico, but in 1815, he was captured and killed. The struggle for Mexican independence seemed at its end. In 1820, political changes in Spain weakened the government. A new group rose to power that, that held views with which the Spanish loyalists did not agree. Many loyalists changed sides and opposed Spain. Mexican rebels saw their chance. An army led by Agustin de Eturbide, a former leader of the Spanish forces, and Vicente Guerrero defeated the Spanish in 1821. Although they had planned to share power, Iturbide pushed out Guerrero and declared himself Emperor Agustin. His reign did not last long. The Mexican people soon turned against him. The war's impact on Texas. Years of fighting in Texas and by Texans in Mexico took its toll. Many Tejanos had been killed in the fighting or fled because of the violence. Only 3,000 Tejanos remained in Texas by 1821. About 1,500 Tejanos lived near San Antonio, the capital. Erasmo Seguin and Jose Antonio Navarro had both fled to Texas during the Gutierrez McGee expedition, but both men returned to San Antonio. Seguin later served as San Antonio's postmaster and in city government. Another 500 Tejanos lived in Goliad, known then as La Bahia. In what is now southern Texas, several thousand people lived along the Rio Grande. Unlike the people in East Texas, they lived in small settlements and isolated ranches. After the war, the ranching industry quickly recovered. About 30,000 American Indians also lived in the region. But the war had caused tension between the Indians and the Tejanos. American Indians attacked Texas settlements. Wealthy ranchers built fort-like houses to guard against attacks. Less fortunate Tejanos lived in Tejacales, one-room huts made of sticks and mud. All right, cool. So hit that challenge activity again, right? In a brief paragraph, summarize the effects of the Mexican War on Texas. And then your DOL is page 90. Oh, read a sentence and fill in the blank with a word from the pair that best completes a sentence. Real simple, real easy. Um, you guys should be done with the packet. When you're done with the packet, get it turned into me. And I'll see you guys in class. Bye.